Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Agile Technical Tester. We are in chapter 3, still continuing with 3.1, but looking at the last topic of this segment, that is 3.1.3, .3, applying test automation to a given test approach. In this tutorial, we'll be understanding that how test automation is applicable or basically applied in different approaches when you talk about different strategies, different approaches, which we have within our testing strategies. And of course, we need to understand a little more bit with the aspect of the test automation that what exactly it is and how it can be applied to a given test approach. First of all, test automation is not a test objective. We generally, we do understand being at this level of uh, you know, understanding at this organization. But what is it exactly is more important? Test automation is basically a strategy when pursued appropriately can promote larger strategic test objectives by increasing testing efficiency, making testing effective against certain types of defects or allowing an earlier discovery of the defects as well. So we don't have to consider automation just as a simple approach of automating and executing test cases. It's obviously something more than that, which is talking about reducing the efficiency or increasing the efficiency, reducing the number of defects at an early stage and putting it all together is increasing the productivity by making use of such things. So it's very critical that test automation really can play an important role in test environment configuration, test release acquisition, test data management, and test results comparison as well to give very good examples of that. When planning and designing the use of such tools, consider the test approach, the implications of the implemented agile lifecycle, the capabilities of test automation tools, and the integration of various other tools which these test tools can support. So generally, we have to consider what kind of approach are you applying and how much or what kind of efficiency can your automation have and also what benefits or value-added services does the automation will add to your life cycle. So starting with the very first thing is, of course, we know there are standard seven approaches which are available in testing, which can be used either as standalone or it can also be used as a combined approach to be applied in any development model. So when it comes to testing, we have seven standard approaches, analytical, model-based, methodical, process compliant, reactive, directed, or regression averse. So the very first thing here to get started with is analytical, which we also know as with respect to risk-based testing, where you analyze risk and understand the same. So here, BDD and acceptance test-driven development are the techniques which can be used within an analytical approach in agile context applied to a test automation. BDD and ATD can also be used to produce automated tests in parallel with the implementation and user stories. The second technique or second approach where automation can also be helpful is with respect to model-based testing, where functional behavior can support automated creation of tests during user story implementation, providing a quick source of efficient tests. Model-based testing can also be useful for the creation of user stories as models basically help you or cater with the requirement gathering and can help you to conduct static reviews as well. So obviously the model-based approach is something which is used when it comes to frequent changing requirements and it's easy to trace the updated changes with respect to models if your requirements are converted into business models. The third one here is methodical approach, which is more method oriented or like standards of the organization. So most of the product based organization prefer to use this since there are short multiple iterations in agile projects. Automated test checklist can be used as methodical approach for efficient execution of a stable set of tests. The other one here is process compliant, when generally the organization goes more with respect to the standards. Again, we are talking about the product-based organization, probably you're talking about a safety critical system, you're talking about aviation products, then process compliant is the only approach which you can rely on or depend on. So on the projects that must comply with externally defined standards or regulations, these standards or regulations can influence how automated tests are used or how automated test results are captured. For example, there is a you know, scenario here when you talk about an FDA-regulated project that is like food and drug administrator, including the high-risk 
automated tests and the results must be traceable back to the requirements and the results must contain sufficient details to prove that the test passed. So as we understand, just by looking at a few of the approaches, that yes, it is different in different approach. So it depends on what kind of strategy, what kind of test approach you are applying to your testing lifecycle or testing altogether, and the automation exactly helps you according to that approach at different point of time. So you need to recognize what kind of approach are you following and how automation will be helpful in that particular strategy or approach. Additionally, we do have three more approaches to understand here. We have the next one as reactive or heuristic. Where reactive testing plays an important validation role in agile testing. Obviously, we know understand very well that with respect to heuristic, which is quite common with respect to agile to look forward for having a better efficiency of testing. While most automated tests primarily play a ver verification role, while reactive strategies are primarily manual, an increased proportion of automated test coverage often leads to a greater degree of manual testing that follows reactive strategies since many of the tests that can be prepared upfront will be automated. Furthermore, of course, the remaining manual tests can cover the riskier areas. Additionally, the next approach when you're talking about directive or consultative where a single person gives you input to determine what activities would be followed and you keep on consulting with them from time to time to determine the upcoming activities. Here when the test coverage is specified by outside stakeholder and the test automation is to be used, the ability of the test team to respond to the request is very important. Probably your consultant might be external to the organization which you're trying to consult and how do you respond to him or give them input with the ongoing activities would be very crucial here because the input provided to the consultant will help him to determine the upcoming activities. Therefore, the test team following a directive test strategy should consider both the time and the skill necessary to complete their task within the iteration. And last but not the least, of course, we're talking about regression hours approach where generally a lot of regression happens if your product is more of a like continuous integration then there's a lot of scope for the regression test to be conducted. In agile projects, the primary characteristics of regression of a strategy is a large, stable and growing set of automated regression tests. Adequate coverage, maintainability and efficient results analysis are critical, especially as the number of regression tests grows. Rather than focusing on an ever-growing set of regression tests, a successful regression averse approach focuses on continuous improvement and refactoring of the created test. Now team, in this particular tutorial, we actually explored the different strategies and understood that how test automation is best applicable in these strategies. So you all have to worry about what kind of strategy is applicable depending on your product and project characteristics. And depending on the same, you can look forward for the benefits of applying automation accordingly to that. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Hope you enjoyed the video and definitely learned something great today. We'll be getting back to you with another similar video on the next topic soon. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep understanding the context. If you have anything else beyond this, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address your query and answer. So thanks for watching this video and happy learning.